Hey everyone, this is Michael for Spirit Comics. I'm re-recording my review about Superman number 37 because I just listened to it and there's a bit of a, I don't know what you would call it, skipping or uh, catching and it was to the point where I was cringing. So, let's hope this doesn't happen again. Now, I do hope that you won't see any shaking as I'm using a new setup. I have so I, I got something to hold my the can the cell phone so the camera can hopefully remain still while I use either my left hand or my right hand. Before, I was only using my left hand to hold the phone, while I used my right hand to turn the page. And that proved, well, in my eyes, unsatisfactory. So, You know, I did what I could until I found something that would do the job. And the inspiration did not come to me until I watched a Facebook Live video by, and I hope I'm going to get her last name right, Dawn Matique. She's an artist, a colorist. She does a wonderful job. She works on, uh, I think, uh, Dynamite Comics. Uh, also, she, I think she works. No, uh, she, she works with uh, J.P. Rothick. I mean, she's she's excellent at what she does. And one day she was doing a Facebook Live, and I noticed both of her hands were free. So. I began to search, you know, how I could do this, and I found this, uh, I'm not exactly sure what to call, what to call it, but it, it holds my, my cell phone while I, record, while I record, and hopefully I can do this again, and be, there'll be no clipping or, or catching or anything. Like I said, this is Superman number 37, it's part one of Super Sons of Tomorrow. Now we've got a lot of action going on here with the cover. Uh, I think it's a uh, let's see, the let's see the name uh, here. Uh, George Jimenez, the uh, is the artist, and I can't. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your first name, but the last name is Sanchez. Is the colorist. Look at that beautiful cover. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's some, there's always somebody different who does the cover. I think. Uh, yeah, uh, Ivan Rise, Julio Frata, and Marcelo Maella. Ma I can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't pronounce the names. Uh, but this is a wonderful cover. It has a lot of action going on. There's no space that's unused. If you've been following my channel, you know that I have an issue with comic books that don't use space in the background and just leave a lot of, you know, un unused areas. Everything here is used. We've got uh, Damian Wayne down here, Aqualad, Raven. I think that's Beast Boy turned into a bird or something. Then next to him is the beautiful Starfire, Superman, and Kid Flash with Superboy in the middle going crazy. You know, like his powers are going haywire or something. Now this is a Superman comic book. You would think he would be in it, and he is, just not a lot. See, we open up to... Wayne Manor, and I know you can't see the lettering very well. I'm sorry about that. 
but that's okay. You're supposed to go out and buy the comic book anyway. It's a, uh, there's a narrator saying, they say you can't go home again, Bruce. They're wrong. So this is somebody coming back home to Wayne Manor. He's, and I'm not going to read all the dialogue in, in here because I don't want to ruin this the story. I want you to go out and buy the comic book. I know I've done that in the past and I'm really this is 2018 I'm going to try to improve on that but anyway someone is coming back to Wayne Manor Bruce is there reading a book and he knows something's going on because you can see him look up he's aware he goes to the window looks out and he sees something or someone coming and then it comes right to the window what the? And then we see this sk crash. Hello, Bruce. It's Batman. Or at least someone wearing a Batman suit. Super Sons of Tomorrow. Dark of the Sun. You know, play on Dark of the Dark Side of the Moon. So and he says, Tim? So now we know who this other Batman is. It's Tim Drake. Tim Drake comes back from wherever he was, or whenever he was, and he's beaten up on Bruce Wayne, but of course, this is Bruce Wayne, the world's greatest detective, and he's not going to be outdone. Sure, Tim picks him up and throws him across the room, then picks him up again, and throws him again. Crash! But that that's not going to keep Bruce down. And so he's figuring out why he's here. And so he gets up and he's coming at Tim because he's not going to let Tim Drake get a, get away with what he has planned. At least he's not. He's going to try prevent him and so he throws him right through a wall Bruce does and then Tim Drake starts some sort of reverse uh, psychology on Bruce and it says uh, judging people their motives in every world Bruce always thinks he knows best yeah, that's like some type of reverse psychology, or right? you know, it's a to get him distracted. Because, but Bruce isn't having any of it, because he is bam, you know, crack right up against his chin, knocking him up. I mean, look, I mean, can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see that. And he comes at him again. Man, he, he's like, he's this is Tim Drake, someone who he raised as a Robin. But he knows this is not this is a future Tim Drake. So it's somebody that has clearly lost their way because this Tim Drake is employing methods that Batman would never approve of. And you'll see that in the next page or so. But this is just funny. I mean, this is just funny right here. Tim Drake, he picks up a cup that has two toothbrushes and two tubes of toothpaste in it. <laughs> and he throws it right at Bruce. And for that, we get a smash. <laughs> that, to me, that's funny. And so they keep going. At, I mean, it's non-stop action here. I mean, I and the the way it was written, it's really uh, Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason did an excellent job. It's like Tim Drake saying, "You think I want blood on my hands?" 
And Bruce saying, you really want to know, Tim? <laughs> and the dialogue between them is is very good, and they're fu and Tim throwing him through the doorway, punching on Bruce, and then Bruce propelling him up over into the next room, and bam, Tim lands on this table. Sky. And then, on this next page, we see something kind of strange. At least it's strange to me. Um, eh. um, Tim's saying, I'm not going anywhere until I get what I came for. Then you have to go through me. I mean, that is, you know, classic dialogue. And for that, Tim throws a knife and stabs it. Yeah, you know, it, st it stabs Bruce's leg. But that doesn't stop him. This is Bruce Wayne we're talking about, man. You don't mess with the Batman. Now, here is where we get something a little bit strange. If you can see this. Bruce Wayne holding up what looks like a black table or a huge uh, wall TV. And here's Tim Drake on the ground ready to or, or, or like he's going to attempt to catch whatever is going to be thrown at him okay and then we move to this panel and we see Tim Drake throwing the clock which hides the entrance to the bat cave at Bruce Wayne now the story the it just does it it just does not track. How did the artist go from this, Bruce Wayne being on top, ready to flatten Tim Drake, to the next panel, Tim Drake flattening Bruce Wayne with the wall clock? It doesn't make sense to me. And then in the very next panel, Bruce Wayne is up again, ready to fight, and Tim... Drake is catching his breath here. So, you know, those three panels, they don't exactly track to me. They don't make sense. And the artwork, you know, the, is just superb. Bruce Wayne throws this knife, you would think, to hit Tim, but he doesn't. No, he aimed it at this chandelier so it came falling down and right landed right on top of Tim now this is where Tim Drake differs from Bruce Wayne he says you leave me no other option Bruce and Bruce Bruce says hmm a gun even if you're from another timeline Shame on you, Timoth. And then, blam! And so he, that knocks Bruce back enough to where, you know, he has to, he can't eat for the time, time being, he can't get up. Tim goes down to the back cave and he gets something that he needs. Because we see here this big, this big casing it contains measures to stop every member of the Justice League should that be necessary. And this is a story that's been played out in uh, Justice League Unlimited, and I think uh, uh, one of the Justice League animated movies. It's, n it's not a new story. You know, Batman has some type of device that can stop every member. I mean, here we see Aquaman, Cyborg, Green Lantern, and Superman, and also there's uh, Wonder Woman, but you can't, can't see hers pictured, 
And uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, who it? Oh, yeah, Flash. Can't see his picture as well. But the one containing Superman's measures is what Tim's after. That's what he needs. Or at least that's what he think he needs. So, he goes from there to the Arctic, where the Fortress of Solitude is located. I mean, after all, this is a Superman comic book. So he should be in it. And he's trying to repair some damage that was done by Mr. Oz a while back uh, that took place in uh, Action Comics mm. let me see here oh yeah it took place in Action Comics 978 where Mr. Oz damaged the statues of his Kryptonian parents and He and I do, I, and he he says this down here at the bottom. I do like I do like this, so I, so I do want to share it. He Superman says when he's rebuilding these statues, I'm as much a child of Earth as I'm a, a Krypton as as I am of Krypton, despite what Oz has done here. So he considers himself to be both of Krypton and Earth. So I think that's really nice. And here we see him starting to rebuild those statues. And I think that one was of, uh, this is going to be, I think that was of his father jor -El. I'm not sure. I would need to go back and get the issue to look it up. But anyways, he starts rebuilding these statues, and his uh, robot helper, Kellex, detects an intruder. And Superman suggests that maybe it's just a polar bear roaming around outside or something. So, but anyway, Kellex, being the one who's his helper, goes to check it out. And here we see, blam, 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 blam! And then Superman going, swoosh! Classic. Classic. And so now, it's like Superman against Batman, although it's not. And even Superman says so. He says, the guns are a dead giveaway. You're not Batman. And your suit specs are different. And he has a... He, he says modifications, physiolo physiology, dampener, hides vital signs, and a, vo a vocal disruptor. Tim Drake, older and, wi and wiser, very good. So they, they exchange dialogue... You know why are they, Why is he there? He wants to know, but he want. But Tim Drake won't say. But he does take Superman out of the way for the time being, but he does not kill him. And he gets the bat suit. I'm not sure how he, the or the uh, Superman suit. I'm not exactly sure. I thought it was a bat suit, but because it has his emblem on it, you know. That's not Superman's emblem. And this is where it gets interesting. He's, Superman says, How did you take control of my Kryptonian battle armor? And Tim says, The Superman from my world, which would be Connor, well, Hint, Connor Kent, taught me how to read and speak Kryptonian when we shared monitor duty. 
and that would be in the Justice League Watchtower. And he even mentions him by name. Connor worshipped the ground you walked on. So Connor Kent was a uh, was I think Superboy in the New Fifty Two, and part of what later became the show called Young Justice. I think I didn't watch it, but I've heard it's good, and I've seen you know vi clips of it. And of course, Superman has no idea who he's talking about. But he says, Well, the Superman from this world is going to teach you a lesson about pain. I love that. Oh my gosh, just look at that expression. And just seconds before he's, re he's ready to unleash his wrath. And... Shroom, boom, right at Tim Drake while he's wearing the suit, and he rips it off him. But that doesn't stop him. You know, for all Superman's efforts, that doesn't stop Tim Drake because he has a contingency plan. Contingency plan, excuse me. He has this pop-up, which is a, like a, conta a container made of red kryptonite, which renders Superman powerless. And here is where Batman, or excuse me, Tim Drake, says why he's here. But I'm going to try not to give the reveal away. But he's here to kill someone. You probably, you may have seen it. Before I stuck my hand over it. <laughs> but overall, the dialogue was really excellent. And I, and the, the ac action, it was non-stop. The pacing was excellent. I really enjoyed this. Everybody did a great job on this book. I am going to be so sad to see this team go, go when it's set back to number one a few months from now and a new writer is taking, taking over the book. But I do recommend that you guys go out and get this issue if you don't have it already. What did you think of it? What were your impressions of this issue? Leave your comments down below. And if you're new to my channel, Spirit Comics, please do subscribe. Smash the notification bell like She-Hulk. Like this video and share it with others so they can enjoy it as well. Till next time, true readers.